Welcome to this week's edition of The Gun Doctor. This week, Chris Egger of Guns.com wrote about smart guns, a subject not often talked about and one we haven't approached until now. Edgar writes, Continuing down the road of making a working smart gun for the U.S. market, two companies are making some noise this week. In exclusive interviews with Reuters, Kansas-based Smart Guns and Pennsylvania's Lodestar Works say they are taking a stab at the controversial practice. The former says law enforcement agents are beta-testing its product, while the latter tells Reuters it just unveiled its 9mm smart handgun for shareholders and investors. We finally feel like we're at the point where, let's go public, Lodestar co-founder Gareth Glazer said, we're there. Smart guns typically employing some sort of authorized user technology like a fingerprint or passcode to unlock the firearm are not a new concept. They've always been just a couple years away for over two decades. Few attempts have made it to commercialization. One of the $1,200 German-made Armatix IP1 was introduced in 2014 but failed to make headway on the market. The 22 caliber long rifle pistol, which required an RFID-equipped wristwatch to be able to fire, could allegedly be hacked with a $15 magnet and jammed with radio waves. This has left a bad taste in the mouths of gun owners who are reluctant to trust such unproven technology. A survey published in the American Journal of Preventative Magazine in 2019 found that 70% of gun owners asked would have a concern about whether the technology would work when needed and only 5% would be very likely to buy such a firearm if it added significantly to the gun's price. Firearms industry trade groups have long had a position that they are not opposed to authorized user recognition technology being applied to a firearm or to the further development of smart guns as long as it is not made a requirement by lawmakers. However, gun makers stress the market for such guns doesn't exist. Two years ago, a Ruger shareholder report said that customer feedback showed very little interest in smart guns, while American Outdoor Brands Corporation, owners of Smith & Wesson, issued their own shareholder report that explained the company does not believe that current authorized user or smart gun technology is reliable, commercially viable, or has any significant consumer demand. The National Shooting Sports Foundation points out that gun owners already store their firearms to prevent their access by those who should not have them. They follow safe handling and storage practices, which are set forth in the owner's manual provided with each firearm. They don't see a panacea in smart gun technology, nor should proponents or policymakers. In other gun news, Georgia Republican Governor Brian Kemp announced his intention to get permitless carry passed in Georgia this year. With a Republican-controlled House and Senate, the governor shouldn't have a problem getting his wish. Meanwhile, in Indiana, Republicans in the State House also want to recognize the right to carry a handgun without a permit. Last session, the Indiana House passed a permitless carry bill on a vote of 65 to 31, but the Senate couldn't get the bill passed and moved to the governor's desk. Finally, 2021 will go down as the second highest year for gun sales, with over 18.5 million lagging only behind 2020, which saw over 21 million in gun sales. Speaking of gun sales, stop on in to Smoke and Gunworks and see the area's largest selection of firearms, accessories, knives, ammo, and apparel. Smoke and Gunworks, where you can buy, sell, or trade, shoot, shop, or train. Smoke and Gunworks, 8785 North Baileyville Road, Forreston, Illinois. For the Gun Doctor, I'm Tim Bivens.